So when I first discovered Steve Martin, somebody said, oh my God, Jay, you, you have to know who Steve Martin is. And um, they introduced me to him. He, I think he did a stand-up set on uh, Johnny Carson, and it was the silliest, nonsensical, most genuinely hilarious thing I've ever seen. And it just totally jived with my own sense of humor and my own sense of silliness. And I thought, oh my God, here's this, here's this guy who's a soulmate. I have to do that. I don't know how I can do that, but I have to do that. And then later when uh, I saw Steve Martin and Bill Murray on Saturday Night Live, it was just always the highlight. And I was in college, first, uh, uh, I guess, latter couple of years of college. And I, I was late to the party. They had been on SNL for um, a couple of years already. I had been actually on a in a show touring, so um, I, I hadn't seen the the very first years of Saturday Night Live. But but when I did, and just the characters that Steve Martin would do and Bill Murray would do together, the level of silliness and uh, imagination that was involved. I think silliness and imagination are like probably maybe the two words that uh, really jump started everything for me. Uh, and they were perfectly embodied in those two actors. And so I moved to New York and started a, a career in stand-up comedy after college. And uh, I did that for about 25 years. And it never leaves you. It's like you always want to be doing it. Um, but I moved into more acting, um, theatrical work. And But those two guys, Steve Martin, Bill Murray, the very pinnacle of... Uh, what uh, was the dynamite that said, you got to go do this, man? Well, I would say it's like being in the zone, being in the moment. There's nothing better than that. You know, as, as a performer, when you lose the sense that you're performing and that you join completely with your audience, whether it's stand-up comedy or the camera or... Um, you know, what, what have you, whatever, whatever creative endeavor you're in, you really lose any sense of yourself in that process. So if it's stand-up comedy, the best moments are when you and the audience are laughing together and there's no, there's no me versus them and me or them. It's just a giant we. And and we are having a great time together, and I'm just facilitating. I'm just facilitating, I guess, the place that we all want to go, which is to have a really great laugh. And, uh, and when it can be something that I thought of, something that came out of my own imagination, that I decided to share with a group of people, and we're all laughing together about it, then you really feel, um, I, I would say, a deep connection, a deep... Um, Maybe it's spiritual, um, maybe it's holy, holy in the sense of W-H-O-L-L-Y. You're, you're, you're so thoroughly engaged and connected. Um, I would think it would be the same whether you're um, playing a piece of music, making people laugh, uh, working with another actor on stage. Those moments where it feels so perfect are the moments where you lose a sense of yourself and you're just purely engaged in the joy of doing. Yeah, laughter is, it's joy. It's the release of um, tension. It's the, it's a joyful experience. Um, it's the reaction when you've been taken by surprise. And it just feels good. It feels good in the body. The body. Laughter feels good in the body. It feels good in your solar, solar plexus. It feels good throughout. Um, it lightens and brightens, and um, if I can be the one that's making people laugh, there's no better feeling. And I, I love to laugh when other people are making me laugh. So laughter is um, it's just good medicine. I feel like it's healing. You know, <laughs> when, I, when I think of Norman Cousins who healed himself through laughter um, after being very, very sick, that tells a tremendous amount about its therapeutic value. And it actually breaks down walls. So people who 
might um, have very different ideologies um, politically or socially or whatever can be united in laughter. And it's, I think it would, I'd say the same about music. Um, it breaks down walls and it unites people. And, and for me, just the, the pure experience of, of a good laugh is, um, it's, it's the best thing on the planet. I mean, being an artist and leading an artist's life is a calling. It's not something that you just uh, go, hey, I'm, uh, what am I doing this weekend? You know what, I think I'm gonna be an artist. It, it's gotta be a calling. It's gotta be something that you cannot not do. You ha it's gotta be one of those things you have to do. And, and whatever expression that takes, whatever form that takes, whether it's music, whether it's writing, whether it's poetry, whether it's, whether it's comedy, whether it's sculpture, whether it's modern dance, whether it's um, anything artistic, I mean, whether it's science, I mean, there's art if it's done well in, I would say anything. I mean, there's, I think, <laughs> just look at our government and you can see the art of accounting, right? <laughs> um, but I think um, really leading an artist's life is a calling and um, something that you can't not do. So does the world need it? Maybe. I mean, I think the world needs art. I think without art, there's no point in any of it. I mean, really, without art, without painting, music, sculpture, dance, um, uh, photography, uh, everything, with, without, without um, creative expression, there really is no world, no world worth living in. Um, so in the broad sense, I do think the world needs it. Um, on the individual level, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think all of us collectively, all of us actors, all of us comedians, making people laugh, telling stories, uh, the, the creativity that comes with photography. I mean, those are the three areas where, you know, I, I live my life. Um, I, I, I hope I'm answering a need for, for the audience, but when I hear actors or comedians say, no, I'm doing it for the audience. I'm like, that's bullshit. You're doing it for yourself. You're doing it for yourself because you have to do it because you don't know anything else to do because it, it is your raison d'etre. It is the reason why you get up in the morning is to be an artist. And, um, very few people. I would say are in, are really in touch with that um, with their creative um, side, um, at least to that level. So, does the world need it? It needs it in the big sense. But I mean, there's a lot of bad music. There's a lot of bad art. There's a lot of bad comedians. There's a lot of bad dance. There's a lot of that stuff. Do they need that? Maybe. Well, maybe. I mean, in a in a very spiritual, broad, philosophic sense, they need it. Um, but on, on a really fundamental personal sense, I need it. I need to do it. So I would say the photography of William Christianberry, uh, William Eggleston, um, just for Aaron Siskin. Um, I mean, a lot, you know, they're, they're photographers that I would say have, have influenced me and my work. Um, and a, a photographer named Jeff Browse. When I was a kid, one of the great joys of my life was driving across country with my grandmother. Uh, I grew up in Santa Monica and we would go to New York. We would go to Santa Fe and my grandmother would say, let's just go. So, you know, always in the summer and we would drive cross country and the roadside Americana culture of Route 66 um, was extraordinary car culture, roadside stuff. And I remember photographing it as a kid. And so many, many, many years later, when I discovered William Eggleston's work, William Christianberry's work, um, Steve Fitch's work, all, a lot of these other photographers who have um, photographed roadside Americana, I was like, I felt like it was the Holy Grail. So that, um, I would say, gave me a certain level of validation to what I had done and what I wanted to continue to do photographically. And, and then as that translates into film work, 
um, films like Baghdad Cafe. Um, I'm forgetting some of the other movies that I've loved that all involve a lot of roadside um, southwestern, um, you know, stuff. It was just kind of great stuff that took place in Vegas and, and things like that. I think when you're in the zone, when things are going really well, the thought process is effortless. Um, there is, there's an absence of struggle. Um, there's clarity. There's a level of focus and dedication to whatever pursuit you're involved in. So when I'm on stage doing stand-up comedy, um, the thoughts just come. The, the associations that you make in the moment with the audience and where you, whereby you're creating um, the fertile groundwork for new comedy bits that you will later go write and struggle with. Um, get, all that groundwork gets laid often when you're um, totally in the moment, having, having fun with the audience. <clears throat> there's no, there's no self-consciousness, I would say. I would say nervousness and self-consciousness are really antithetical to the creative process. So if you're nervous and feeling self-conscious and too much in your head, that kind of shuts everything down. But when you're in the moment and you're, and you're moving through that in whatever creative venue, um, I mean, I can go for hours not eating when, I'm not, when I would otherwise be hungry when I um, am out photographing something and I'm totally excited about what I'm photographing and where to stand, how to shoot, you know, all, all the technical aspects of, of image making. Um, I'm not even thinking about it because I, I'm, just, I'm just making the work. Um, I would say the mental aspect, uh, I would say there's a great deal of unencumbrance. Thoughts flow. Yeah, that's a good question. So yes, um, when it comes to my sense of humor, um, the sense of whimsy that I find in the visual world and in, in life around me. I mean, I'm creating a visual world through my photography. Um, for example, I've always thought that seeing teachers and uh, people who are involved with children, stringing them all on a leash uh, and walking them through the city. I, I understand it's how important that is for the safety of kids to all be connected. You don't want to lose them. Um, and um, and also seeing dog walkers with 50 dogs on 50 leashes. And so I always thought it would be really fun to try to find that moment when I could marry the image of a dog walker with all these dogs and, and somebody also walking, you know, 15, 20 kids on a leash. Well, that moment happened, but I was really ready for it because in my mind's eye, I had created that. I had created that image for myself long before I ever taught the, caught the picture. And then when I saw that moment, I just happened to have my good camera with me and snapped the shot. And it's a great photograph. So that sense of um, connecting two things that are kind of funny on their own and marrying them, marrying them, making those, taking those somewhat de uh, disparate ideas and putting them together and making um, a photographic image is not too dissimilar to a mentally creative process of writing jokes, of writing, of sharing your point of view about the world. So those two go together really well. We, we swim in a sea of visual language. Um, it's everywhere. And a play I did a few years ago, I loved it for the directors and the art directors, um, stage, um, stage directors, what do you call it? Who, the scene set designer, the set designer, um, 
they created a visually spectacular plane, visual plane for the audience um, of really simple shapes and form on the stage. And um, I knew being an actor in it, I can't see that from the audience point of view because I'm separated by time and space. But the um, knowing that I was part of this really exciting visual that um, that was part of the production was was kind of great, and it had sort of a minimalist element to it, which is also um, a part of my photography. 